Good evening, I'm Maciej Mikos and you're watching World Talks. The US has announced another military aid package for war torn Ukraine, this time worth nearly a billion dollars. As Joe Biden's term comes to an end, the future of American support for Ukraine remains unclear. On Saturday, President-elect Donald Trump discussed the issue with Emmanuel Macron and Volodymyr Zelensky during a meeting in Paris. And to talk about it, we are joined by Maria Mazenceva, head of Ukraine delegation to the Council of Europe. Good evening. Greetings from Kharkiv, Ukraine. Very good evening to you. So Ukraine will receive more drones, more munitions from the HIMARS. Now, given the, the constant Russian advance in the east, how important is this uh, latest uh, military aid package? Well, uh, speaking to you from the one of the most uh, affected regions, and this is uh, the region of Kharkiv that was under temporarily um, occupation in 22, was released uh, by our brave soldiers. Currently, several villages are under severe attack, like, for instance, a small town of Kupansk, which is strategic location uh, also to be linked up uh, logistically to the whole area of Donbass. Well, the, uh, we, we uh, highly salute the new coming uh, next uh, military package because our army doesn't have uh, holidays or days off, uh, especially in the, fear of in the sphere of drones. We um, highly salute joint efforts and communication and joint production in terms of NATO, NATO cooperation uh, among our allies, because this is the area where Ukraine has not only tactical uh, suggestions and practical ones, but very, very interesting um, outcomes when the uh, bombardment drones or surveillance drones are working and they are easily targeting, for instance, with the small bird you have seen on the screen, uh, which can be around 300 euros. It can uh, deactivate, simply destroy a tank that would be 3 million euros. So, um, you know, this this practical knowledge, this uh, amazing knowledge of our already veterans can be passed to um, NATO allies. And today also we talk about special anti-drone systems that are being developed. Of course, as um, we, all, we all understand, the amount of military support also has to be supported by the amount of people on the front line. And I want to inform uh, our um, TV guests that around 70,000 of women are currently serving in our army. And uh, we're trying, you know, to be also very gender balanced. So the new package, which is coming from U.S., the new package which is coming from Germany, even the military package which is planned from Luxembourg from 20, uh, for 25, are all very, very important. We see um, the uh, recent developments in um, um, diplomacy, in um, the uh, negotiations that were held uh, recently in Paris. Of course, all of them are dedicated to a slogan, uh, just Peace, just for peace. Right after the uh, negotiations peace. in Paris, which you, which you just mentioned, on, on, on the next day, Donald Trump wrote on social media, no, 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 that's, that was during his interview for NBC. He stated that Ukraine should prepare for less military aid uh, when, once he enters the, uh, the Oval Office. Uh, how would you comment on these words? Uh, you know, I think we should wait for the actions. We have seen different, you know, um, scary strategies being developed uh, when he was uh, already a nominee and President Zelensky b met both candidates and also, of course, still in touch with current President Biden, who has supported this new package of military support. I think the uh, very, very evident message of Donald Trump, uh, which he 
he stated on platform X uh, recently was also to support uh, strong Ukraine and just full peace. And I would like to refer to his advisors, uh, soon to be appointed, for instance, Mr. Kellogg, who will become uh, presumably the new appointee, f- a special envoy for Ukraine and Russia re- relations. He recently mentioned in uh, D.C. when he met uh, the um, head of uh, President Zelensky's office that uh, more military support will make Ukraine with a stronger position, but also U.S. with a stronger position in the future negotiations, where, of course, we expect uh, Russia to participate. Currently, we see interesting developments in the Middle East. I mean Syria right now, which has been under dictatorship for the last 50 years. And I think this global challenges are definitely something we also have to um, discuss, to mention, and to take into consideration. We highly appreciate it also, uh, the uh, fact that President Macron uh, took, takes a leadership here as a French president, where uh, France is... Do you regard President Macron who, these days as the uh, main peace broker for, um, for Ukraine on the European side? Uh, I think President Macron and uh, his team, but also France in general, and the people of France are stand today on the very right side of the history. And I think the leadership is very clear. Of course, he's one of the leaders, but also if we take, you know, all the packages of military support, we also can see there Germany and uh, other countries, our friends from Poland, who actually became a of military support, where all the military support arrives and then uh, lands and distributed all over Ukraine. This is also very important logistically. So we should not, you know, exclude someone. But uh, the leadership of uh, President Macron here is very evident in terms of putting this dialogue forward, calling the presidents to join the efforts. And, you know, it's very it's very smartly linked with opening of um, the symbol uh, of the nation, of the French nation, and also in international culture, finally Notre Dame uh, uh, in Paris. And I think it was very wise and interesting uh, diplomatic uh, move. Let's not talk about Notre Dame itself. Let's talk about the meeting between the... T- and, um three leaders. Now, uh, President Zelensky, after the, uh, the meeting, wrote on social media, peace through strength is possible and all we want, uh, we all want this war to end as soon as possible and in a just way. Now, uh, I'd like to ask you about these uh, particular... Uh, yes. Except the, the, the just way. Now, w- w- what does it mean, the just peace? Now, uh, is, uh, t- does it include territorial concessions to Russia? Uh, well, we, we will never, uh, we will never admit uh, that Russia has a right to any of our territories. Started from illegal attempts to annex Crimea to the current territories of Donetsk, Lugansk, Zaporizhia, and Kherson. Uh, severe battles are ongoing in Sumy, Chernigiv, and Kharkiv. But you know, Russia is trying to make the frozen conflict do something like, for instance, it has been doing in Minsk format. Uh, we have seen, of course, a very unsuccessful international agreement called Budapest Memorandum when we did a concession on exchange in sort of our nukes, the third largest uh, nuclear pot- uh, potential in the world for the territorial integrity and uh, for the support of our international partners, which has failed. So today, President Zelensky is talking about just peace in a way that we have about 150,000 registered war crimes. We have an aggression that uh, we see as a way to set up international tribunal for the crime of aggression. And we already know it will be set up by international agreement between Ukraine, Council of Europe, and any country of the world that wants to see justice. So other dictators in the world will see a signal. They cannot do whatever they want to. Also, of course, war crimes compensation mechanism. More than 40 countries are participating right now to use Russian assets, Russian frozen assets, to pay compensations for 
all terms of different war, war crimes, sexual violence, uh, abducted children, missing civilians, prisoners of war, etc. This really means just full peace, the peace that comes with justice, which, and we understand, of course, it will not take a day, even a year. It will take longer time, but we are working on it since already February 22. And I think but people are dying on the today. front lines and in Ukrainian cities today. And you're willing to, yes, absolutely. to, to wait, to, to prolong the conflict in the name of this very just peace. Yes? No, we are not prolonging the conflict. Well, first of all, Russia invaded us. We are not the initiator of the conflict. And this is not a conflict. It's even wrong to use it in this way. It's but do you see war. Russia willing to enter negotiations with Ukraine and with the West? I do. Uh, under these conditions, which you, which you just enumerated, the prosecution of war crimes, the compensation I mean, and, and, and uh, the use of Russia's frozen assets? It, it will definitely come. Of course, Russia is not a fan of it. And uh, Putin now is blocked from visiting uh, more than 150 countries of the world as International Criminal Court uh, issued a warrant against him. But that's because he made these actions himself. And he is now very limited and very isolated. Their economy is really uh, not playing well. It's 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 rocking down. It's in the huge recession ever ever seen. And we hope that European partners can support the 15th package of sanctions because I can truly say sanctions are working, but more pressure is needed. Why Putin will be forced to sit at the table? Because the conditions are so for him. He can't, uh, you know, uh, mobilize people not having money. So he motivate them only with money. Uh, we, mo we, our motivation internally in Ukraine still exists and it's, the morale is very high regardless how hard it is. I'm coming from the family, uh, half of which is at the front line since 2014. And I must tell you that we are not ready to give up uh, just because Putin is not willing currently to sit at the table. He will be forced to and I think international community is playing a great part and great role in this. Also with what I have have outlined sanctions, more military aid, and he had he couldn't enter Kiev within three days as he planned. That's very obvious. But we could enter Russia. We are now uh, in a Kursk region. Uh, our army is showing that Russia is not the most powerful, the most, you know, uh, uninvadable country. That was not our idea from the very start. But it shows to international community that Russia can fail. I think. Could Ukraine be planning any more incursions into the Russian territory? Unfortunately, I'm not uh, the uh, the commander of any battalion or uh, I'm not chairing uh, the military uh, departments to say so. But I can tell you I'm in touch with brigades that are serving now uh, next to Sumy region where we're where Kursk region is next to, and they are helping uh, at the very most to civilians as well who were left by Russia there. And it's very severe winter right now. There are there are newborns, there are children, there are elderly, and that's what distinguishes us from uh, how Russians were be behaving in Bucha, Irpin, Izum, and other and other towns. So I do believe that success of this operation, regardless how hard it was and still is, is showing the strength of tactics and uh, military knowledge of Ukrainian army. Mm -hmm. Uh, nevertheless, the majority of Ukrainians would like the war to end as soon as uh, as possible, given the, the the recent opinion. We all, we all want. We all want. Mm -hmm. peace, but given the recent opinion polls. Now, uh, lastly, I, 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 I'd love you to comment on uh, Donald Trump's uh, words that uh, Kiev quote ridiculously lost four hundred thousand soldiers and many more civilians. Now. As you said, well, y Ukraine paid a price in blood for for this, hopefully, long and justing, uh, well, the just and lasting uh, peace. Now, do you find the the loss of uh, of the lives of Ukrainian soldiers ridiculous? Mm, uh, no, I don't. Uh, simply, simply from the moral point of view, I think. Uh, well, I can't. Not I can't. I cannot know what Mr. Trump wanted to say. Maybe the adjective could have been different. I think what he has meant is that uh, 
the losses has to stop, but it means that the Russia has to stop uh, the war against us. And I would refer to President Zelensky statistic that was uh, opened by Radio uh, Free Europe and many other official sources, also from our military side. We have lost more than uh, 43,000 Ukrainian soldiers and uh, many uh, thousands of uh, still wounded uh, on uh, Russian side killed and wounded, it's more than 700,000. So, uh, you know, it doesn't make, uh, the figures don't, don't, don't make us happy. You know, it's not the achievement, but we have to protect ourselves. And we now currently are developing the new veteran policy, by the way, where American NGOs are participating, like, for instance, Waterman Foundation and many others who help us to cure soldiers, to heal them in Poland and many other countries, to treat them well and to give them protesis if, if they lose uh, limbs, uh, to bring them back to sort of the most normal life we can give them, to have jobs, to have uh, relationships, to have families, so they can feel them uh, as, as they have fulfilled their, their duty to the state, but their life, their life goes on. So I think veteran policy is where uh, many partners can can join in. Uh, I, I myself um, been very dedicated to these activities, uh, and I want to thank every every international partner who help us uh, to bring back life to our uh, veterans. Maria Mazentsev, head of Ukraine delegation to the uh, Council of Europe. Thank you very much for joining us today. It was pure pleasure, and please stay safe. And thank you for watching and stay with us for much more news and features here on TVP World.